So I will try to bring to your attention the Austrian perspective and uh, maybe a little bit different from the former speakers. I will try to combine to combine my presentation with a, an fictive case. And uh, my speech is orientated on, on a practical view. First, uh, I would like to introduce a little bit uh, addressing compliance. Uh, throughout past years, this concept of compliance has been subject to increased attention in Austria. It describes a conglomerate of rules intentionally self-prescribed by corporations in order to control the risks accompanying their business operations. Compliance is inherently linked to a corporation's organization and aims to avoid disorganization. In this sense, it is a procedure to comply with legal, but also with ethical, moral, environmental, or other standards. Criminal compliance simply stands for compliance with criminal law. By implementing European requirements, compliance has arrived in Austria and has since then been cultivated by public prosecutor offices and corporations. As part of this development, the demand for jurists and lawyers with the relevant expertise to advise corporations in their compliance system has raised. Compliance has become more than a mere vogue word. It is the effort of business leaders and corporations to deal with the diverse complexities of white collar crimes and to face and, and encounter them based on a specific preventive approach. Effective compliance is capable to tackle a corporate culture which actually facilitates the commission of crimes, thus minimizing the risk of criminal liability. Even after the commission of crimes, establishing or bolstering compliance systems can have significant effects on potential public prosecutor's decision for closure, indictment, or diversion. Firstly, there are no specific legal regulations of internal investigations in Austria. Uh, there are some best practices. Secondly, there is not such a hype of internal investigations in Austria as it is the case, for example, in Germany. So let me say, from this point of view, thirdly. Measures taken after the commission of a crime can be internal investigations, which are investigations commissioned by external or internal investigators in respect of alleged breaches, for example, given criminal law within a corporation. Internal investigations are not conducted by the state, but by the private entities and criminal compliance wants to anticipate criminal risks in the first place and is predominantly of a preventive character. Whereas internal investigations want to clarify the facts in order to build a base to consider further steps and are of a repressive character. However, the concepts ought to be considered together as they ultimately both seek prevention of criminal liability of the corporation. This presentation explains the effects of criminal compliance 
and internal investigations, on pretrial investigations, on the example of a made up case, which is fictive. Through its internally established whistleblower hotline, the Corporation C is provided anonymously with an information. Employees should have bought goods which were produced under unfair and environmentally unfriendly conditions. Example given, working conditions which amount to modern slavery, use of harder chemicals. Subsequently, the employees sold them as fair and ecologically friendly produced goods to intermediaries and consumers, charging the full price of, for such products. The established compliance system within the cooperation was not capable to prevent the commission of these crimes. Being aware of the potential damage, this issue could cause the cooperation C starts, the cooperation C starts to worry about its reputation. The board of the company therefore decides to have a law firm together with an auditing office to conduct an internal investigation within the cooperation. After the internal investigation has finished, the board provides the public prosecutor office with a final report, including the whole bundle of investigative results. Additionally, the cooperation has its internal compliance system revised in order to prevent the commission of such crimes in the future. This is the fact fictive case. The public prosecutor office initiates investigations in respect of the potential commission of fraud by the employees. In the course of pre-trial investigations, all the members of the board are subpoenaed by the public prosecutor's office. However, all of them invoke their testimonial privilege by the Austrian law, according to Article 17 of our Verbandsverantwortlichkeitsgesetz. Uh, Having examined the information provided by the information, the public prosecutor decides to close the case according to Article 18 of our law, but now in detail. Now it is time to address shortly the legal system of corporate criminal liability in Austria, which we have since 2006. The crime, but before, let me address that the crime of fraud, which is also defined in our criminal code, uh, the employees deceive the intermediaries and consumers about the conditions under which goods, the goods were produced with the intent to unlawfully enriching them and or the corporation, thereby causing economic damage amongst the intermediaries and consumers. Apart from individual criminal liability of their employees, the corporation could be held criminally accountable as well. In 2006, the Austrian legislator passed the act on the liability of legal entities for criminal offenses. We call it Verbandsverantwortlichkeitsgesetz. It follows the approach rooted in the second protocol of the protection of the financial interests of the European Union from 1997. Under Article 3 of our law, a legal entity is only criminal li liable if the crime was committed for the benefit of the legal entity or by violation of its legal obligations. Charging the price of fair and ecologically friendly product produced goods was no doubt for the benefit of the corporation as its total assets increased. 
According to Article 3.3 of our law, corporate criminal liability is established when the office of plans was committed by an employee acting under the authority of a person who has a leading position within the legal entity and whose lack of supervision or control has made the commission of that offense possible. The accusation in this model is essentially disorganization or rather organizational fault. This additional requirement is necessary as the legal entity is not represented in its entirety by its employees as opposed to its leading personnel. There is, generally speaking, no legal duty in Austria to establish a compliance system within a corporation. It's different for banks, it's different for assurances, but in generally, there is no obligation. It's ultimately a corporation's decision whether it wants to establish internal rules which safeguard compliance with, with externally prescribed rules or internally set standards. However, an established compliance system can have significant implications on a corporation's criminal liability pursuant to our law. Under the aspect of organizational guilt, it must be proven that the lack of supervision or control by a person having a leading position within the legal entity has facilitated the commission of an offense through an employee. It has to be investigated whether a leading person through his omissions generated an empirically dangerous and normatively intolerant risk which is capable of facilitating employees in committing crimes. That's the main, the main scope. The behavior of the leading person has to be causal, causal for the commission of the crime committed by the employees. Accordingly, it must be possible for the corporation to raise a compliance defense. If the leading person, if the board, actively took measures which were capable to prevent the commission of such crimes, the accusation of disorganization becomes void. It's obvious that such measures are most effectively implemented by means of a compliance system. In this way, Article 3, 3 uh, of our Verbandsverantwortlichkeitsgesetz generates a strong incentive for leading persons of legal entities to establish a reasonable organizational structure aiming at preventing crimes such as fraud. Now let me come to the design of such a compliance system. There is apparently no sample solution was shaping such organizational structures. The establishment of a compliance system does not necessarily lead to criminal immunity. Rather, it must be ex ante capable to prevent the commission of crimes. Whether the measures implemented are required and reasonable must be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. Relevant factors guiding this assessment are the size and the structure of the corporation, the danger generally prevailing within the corporation, the education and reliability of the employees, and many more aspects. That being said, a compliance system individually designed for one corporation cannot be transferred to another one even when working in the same field of business. This stipulated assessment on a case-by-case -case basis leads to legal uncertainty. It is difficult for our corporations to predict 
from an ex ante point of view, whether their established compliance system is capable of preventing crimes. On the other hand, it would be logistically impossible to determine the requirements of the measures which ought to be taken precisely. Accordingly, the issue can only be solved by professional legal consultation. The facts said above in the case state that the established compliance system within the corporation was not capable to prevent the employees from committing fraud. Depending on the actual design of the compliance system, the corporation C could or could not be held criminal, criminally liable. On mesh, one measure which must be considered here is, is the established whistleblower hotline, which is an effective tool in order to control whether employees comply with the internally set standards. Compliance is not only about setting rules, but also about implementing measures in order to safeguard compliance with the self prescribed rules to comply with the compliance system of the corporation. Also, the corporation C was not charged with adding and abetting human rights violations or the destruction of the environment in its global supply chain, this could as well become a realistic scenario in the future. And it is already promoted by NGO and so far rarely applied by public prosecutor offices. The more numerous soft law instruments govern compliance with human rights in global supply chains. National and supranational hard law instruments, you see some examples in this chart, the OECD guidelines and so on. On this issue, a lot of instruments are on the race. Also, no directly imposing criminal sanctions for violating their respective provisions, these legal instruments could indirectly affect criminal liability of cooperation for human rights abuses within their global supply chain, chains, thereby generating another incentive for establishing compliance measures in this regard. A thorough analysis of this issue would exceed the scope of this presentation and it is subject in Linz for further research. As outlined above, the Austrian Verbandsverantwortlichkeitsgesetz sets strong incentives on establishing an effective compliance system. Incentives, there are no obligations. Apart from the effects on the substantive law, it can also have strong effects on the procedural decision of the public prosecutor. Concerning criminal proceedings against individuals, the Austrian criminal procedure stipulates a strict obligation to investigate. Prosecution is mandatory if there is a sufficient suspicion that a criminal offense was committed by an individual. In proceedings on corporate criminal liability, however, the principle of mandatory investigation and prosecution is accompanied by broad discretionary powers vesting in the public prosecutor. According to Article 18 of the Verbandsverantwortlichkeitsgesetz, the prosecutor may refrain for, from or abandon prosecution of a legal entity. Amongst the decisive factors whether to further implement proceedings is the conduct of the entity after the commission of the crime. After the crime had been committed, 
as in our fictive case, the Corporation C conducted internal investigations, provided the public prosecutor's office with the result of its internal investigation, and last but not least, revised the existing compliance system. The public prosecutor shall in particular refrain or abandon prosecution if investigations or requests for prosecutions would involve an enormous amount of time and money, which would be obviously disproportionate to the importance on the matter or the sanctions to be expected in the case of conviction. The subpoenaed members all invoked their testimonial privilege to silence. Another decisive factor regarding the further implementation of proceeding is whether the organizational fault of the corporation in relation to the individual offense in the, sphere of the, in the sphere of the corporation is severe or not. This sets another incentive to establish an effective complying system aiming to avoid organizational fault. If the public prosecutor has decided to bring the case to trial and had it subsequently lead to a conviction, then also the judge would have to consider the following factors as mitigating in the sanctioning decision. So this is not touching the question of guilt or conviction, it's touching the sentence. The, the, the center. Whether the legal entity took measures to prevent the commission or crimes before the crime was committed, this is one factor the judge can consider as a mitigating circumstance. Whether the legal entity contributed to clarify the facts after the crime was committed, another factor. And whether the legal entity took measures to prevent the commission of crimes in the future after the crime was convicted. All of these factors would be applicable in the present case, as the Corporation C established a compliance system before the fraud was commissioned, conducted internal investigations, and revised its compliance system afterwards. Similarly, these factors must be considered when it comes to the decision as to whether the sanctions shall be, shall be put on probation or not. Ultimately, the sanctioning decision may be also mitigated in hindsight if the legal entity took significant compliance measures after the sanctioning was rendered. So let me draw up the conclusion. There are huge instruments which can be applied in such a case. The Austrian, the codification of the Verbandsverantwortlichkeitsgesetz, therefore, let me say, has a very strong focus on, preve on prevention rather than on punishment. Establishing effective compliance system can have, and they regularly have, an effect on the corporate's criminal liability. The public prosecutor's discretionary powers and the judge considerations in sanctioning. Compliance systems are thereby considered positively if established before the commission of a crime, after the commission of a crime, and even after a sanctioning decision was rendered. Additionally, corporations are encouraged to cooperate with public prosecutor offices. So that's what I would like to say and to bring you to your attention. And let me say thank you for your attention. <laughs>